again. All right, so just just interrupt me if I start going all robotic again. I'll just cancel it all there again and restart. All right, so we last left off. We came back from defeating the Red Brands, and we were celebrating at the end. Uh, Na, the bugbear barbarian, she defeated, well, fought off some barbarians, but she lost in a fight. She was a bit depressed about losing in a one-on-one -on -one fight, because she's never lost in a one-on-one -on -one fight before. But she saved Elsa the barmaid. And they got a congratulatory meal from the new cook, uh, Grub, the, um, the orc chef, who has the sweetest, most innocent voice. And, uh, Barthen and Lenine are both giving us half off on their services as thank you for defeating the Red Brands. They won't give us extra for anything we want to sell, but for anything we want to buy, we'll get half off. And, uh, Nina from Neverwinter, the shopkeeper, um, she just came here to visit her, uh, sister, and she was asking us if we were going to be in Neverwinter for the festival next month, or in one month, for the tournament, and also because it's a festival. And I'm guessing we're all going to join in on that fun later. Also, Deus, the... Uh, Yanti, Jesus Christ, I couldn't, couldn't remember the name. Uh, she comes over after like the whole fight and you know, uh, not stuffing her face. And then Nina stops talking to her sister and goes over and talks to us. She comes over. And uh, let's see here. Uh, hey, Nah, how you feeling? I was like, ah, better now. I guess the food was so good. Have you had? Have you tried that that chef's food? I was like, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to soon. But uh, I was wondering, uh, are you guys going to be heading out of town anytime soon? Um, would you be willing to take one more person along? Okay. Uh, well, you gotta split the loot more. <laughs> but, um, she wants to join along because... Hmm? Why? Yeah, she... I know. Uh, and she gathered that from the first night you guys were in the bar, your money grubber. She already, she already knows you. Um, also, never tell DM to do rolls. Ever. Ever. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, no, she already knows your money grubber. And, uh, but she was saying, like, after you said that, she was saying, but you would have to split the loot more. Plus, she's a snake. She could pin you down with her snake body, and you wouldn't be able to move. Or just, you know, cast a charm spell or some kind of spell where you can't do anything. Because you have literally no resistances to um, stuff involving res resisting with your mind. Anyway. Uh, she wants to come along because she saw Nas' heroism. And even though she lost, she stood up to like a group of people who were harassing someone. And uh, she, want, she wants to hang around with Na, mostly, just because she's a bird and she wants stories to tell in other cities when she, uh, when she goes to them. Tell, tell the stories of us, our heroism. Mostly Na. But also, she's a bird and she likes to travel around, so traveling with us is probably going to be more fun and adventure for her. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Also... Uh, actually, I actually have to roll her thing. Um, during the night, she uh, character sheet? She was playing in the bar, and uh, see how much money she gets. Let's see, doodly 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 do. I guess it'd just be performance. Oh, she didn't do all that great. <laughs> 
I got a 12. Uh, I was going to see what kind of money. Has she got any tips? She got a 12. It's not terrible, but like she's not, she's not on top of her game today. Uh, let's see, I rolled that with a disadvantage. Jesus, I got the same roll twice. Uh, so I would just cut that in half. So let's see, do, 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 do. that would be 30 gold. She got, This is earlier in the night. I'm just deciding like how much she got from her tips. She, she got a whole 30 gold, which is not, not as much as she normally gets. But uh, yeah, so you have a new party member, the, the snake chick. Yep. And uh, also, uh, Blight, Gnaw, and Briorg are going to do constitution checks. Not saving throws, ju just checks. Exact same. Uh, so yeah, um, well, Na had a bit more because she ate a lot more, but uh, the cooking from Grub gives us temporary hit points. Yeah, even though you only ate a little, little bit, you're gonna get temporary hit points. Uh, so in your character sheet, where the temporary hit points are shown, right underneath your regular hit points, um, put in five. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so Blight gets the same. Uh, yeah. Oh, as soon as those f five like are taken off, then um, then you, they'll be deactivated until something happens that gives you more temporary hit points. Why is my Computer so slow. I'm gonna say Nog gets the same amount, I guess. Okay, okay. Uh, what else is there? That was the thing I forgot to do last time. Anyway, uh, so I don't think there's anything else for the night that I have planned. No one wants to gamble right now. Yeah. Uh, the rogues over over here, they don't really want anything to do with you. Durga, Durga said that he would uh, meet you in the tournament next time you meet. See if he does. Yeah. So we... we yeah. Uh, Na and you both have... Uh, both have basically like a rival that you have to go up against, basically. You gotta fight Durga, who's a barbarian, and Nurt Na also has to fight a barbarian. But they were people that we couldn't beat. <laughs> hmm. So anyway, uh, I'd say we rest up. Um, oh, got to drag the players over. So we rest up. Oh, how how long do you plan to be up tonight? Not too late, or doesn't matter to me. Oh, okay. Uh, so your HP is now up to full. You can, you can just click on your token and put it to the max. This is Because you're level three, and you have those five temporary hit points. Okay. Uh, it lasts until they until we take the damage. Yep. 
Uh, at least that's what I'm doing with it. Since this is just uh, from eating food, you're going to have the temporary hit points until you take damage. That's how good his cooking is. Uh. Bjorg, the dwarf who's too stupid to keep anything good. Anyway, oh yeah, remember how last time I was like, I don't have any mood music for the situation. <laughs> uh, I actually did, and I forgot that I even had it. This would have been perfect. It's from Persona 4. <laughs> but now, I forgot because I didn't look through all my music, memorize what stuff I had, because I'm stupid. Anyway, so um, we get up, and uh, Miss Straw, Blight, Nob, and you are all up in the inn. Callista's nowhere to be seen, though. Oh, also, um, oh, hold on, I just gotta get her thing here. Eh. There we go. She's, Deus is also with us. And, um, yeah, Callista's nowhere to be seen. Um, there is a note that Toblin hands to us. Uh, Callista has gone, gone off to do her own thing now. She's, uh, saying it was fun and thanks for, like, helping her deal with the red brands and all that. Uh, she, she also, in, like, quotation marks, uh, wrote down the dwarf, as in you, um, she did a background check on you. She doesn't st st uh, put anything in the note that would, like, reveal anything. But, uh, do an insight check on, like, the note, that the parts that are about you. Just do insight, see if you can gather. Oh, uh, you don't know shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh well, you won't you won't find out about that till later. <laughs> but uh, safe to assume, like er, er, everyone, let's see, I'll have Miss. Oh, I'll have her character sheet open. Uh, Miss Straw, see if she has some insight, because it's threat is addressed to all of us. Um, Her eyes, she's like, she's holding a piece of paper like a child, and both eyes go off in different directions as she's looking at it. <laughs> she's not having a good morning. <laughs> she's not having a good morning. She's tired and groggy. She used too much of her magic yesterday. Uh, oh, yeah. She... Hey, yeah. Oh. She, she just like pops. I was like, ah, what? Oh. Yeah, I can't gather anything from this note. I'm sorry, Briar. Or, sorry, uh, d the dwarf. <laughs> no, uh, I don't know. It's gonna get everyone's character sheets open for easier reference afterwards. Uh, eh. And she's coming with us now to so get her character sheet. I have to manage all these characters and I have to remember how I fucking planned them out in my head. Uh, let's see here. One, two, three, four. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, Cliss has gone off on her own to do her own thing. Uh, she says thank you. She just... It, 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 you were looking at it as like, in quotations, but you just think that she's just putting it in quotation marks um... To emphasize that you pref you're called the dwarf, and just say instead of saying dwarf, that's all you can gather. Because <laughs> emphasize. Yeah. She also says that if you do anything to, uh, you know, jeopardize the the rest of us or anything like that, she will find you and she will kill you, and you'll never see it coming. <laughs> you already failed that check with her before, like so. In in the back of your mind, is like you're you're afraid to sleep now. Uh, hold on, 
is lagging. Okay. So yeah, we get up. Um, we have breakfast and all that stuff. Um, let's see. I'm just trying to go through my head. Uh, da, 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 da. Hmm? Oh, don't worry. That'll, that'll be for afterwards. Yeah. Um, just trying to get my thoughts straight here. So... Ah. Yeah. Um, Sildar comes up to you guys and, um, like, well, he goes into the stone hill looking for you guys, or all of us. And, uh, he's look he sees us, and, like, we're just getting up, we're just getting, like, breakfast and all that. And, uh, he comes to talk to us about, uh, the criminals that we brought in. So he found out some information comes to sit down with us at the table so after interrogating glass staff that you guys brought in last night um apparently he's in league with the black spider as we as we figured uh, after after you brought him in and uh that the paperwork thank you miss straw um, there's enough evidence to put him, incarcerate him. He's going to jail for a long time. He says this with like, he he's just really disappointed as he's saying this because he, this was his friend who turned evil, right? But you know it's his job and he's a good guy. That he doesn't. He's basically the uh, he's not a paladin, but he's like typical paladin mentality, like justice and all that nonsense. Yeah, he's a law enforcer, and he does not like corruption. Anyway, uh, also he's a veteran soldier, so he, he's seen his share of like just fucked up shit on the battlefield. Anyway, um, and the other body, uh, the cat person, the, the tabaxi. So after talking to the last staff. He's not even calling him a Yarno anymore. He's just calling him Glassstaff. Um, apparently, the Black Spider was planning to make an alliance with the followers of Bane. Uh, roll history to see if you know anything about the followers of Bane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, both you and Mistra. Mistra, um, she would know from personal experience, the followers of Bane. Uh, you, you've heard the name, um, back in your time with the Blood Axes, you've done jobs for clients that called themselves the followers of Bane as, uh, mercenary contracts. And, uh... The only thing you do know is that uh, whenever you were hired to do a job, it involved killing a lot of people. Whether they were innocent or not, uh, they always hired you to kill a lot of people. Indiscriminately. So yeah, they're not exact. They're, they're basically terrorists. They're also powerful enough to take on, you know, governments, you know, kingdoms, world leaders and stuff like that, and their armies. Miss Draw just looks mortified that uh, the followers of Bane, like, their whole thing is coming back up. She she knows of them from her past. Um, yeah, go ahead. Like, she's not really trying to hide it, but, like, she's not saying anything. She just looks mortified. She's fucking horrible. Yeah, you can... You can just... You can also just ask her. Yeah. 
We'll say how long. Yeah, well, she's just going. You just have to ask her. It, you'd only roll insight if, like she's hiding something. But uh, you could have just asked her. It's like a long time ago. This is before you were even born, Bjorg. Or sorry, the dwarf. I keep saying that by accident. Um, I'm older. Yeah. Elves live twice as long as just dwarves. Yeah. So. She she looks at you. She's like, I was there when you were born. Yeah, I was also there when you now and you blight were also born. Now it's like, what? It's like, how did you not die? Everyone from my clan was like just a savage monster. And blight was like, huh? He's like, well, you know about. Blight is like trying to hide, trying trying to just brush it off. And like she was there when I was born. She, shit. <laughs> she already knows about his his family and his background and all that stuff from his past. She knows. Yes, Reork, dwarf. <laughs> Well, simple. I was born first. Hmm? Uh, I've been all over the place. Also, well, I'll tell you about it later. But the reason why I joined you guys is because, let's say, when each of you were born, something special happened. And I kept an eye on all of you, which is why, which is why I knew you were going to be at the Cragmall hideout, and I was waiting for you there. Yeah. Like the pupils just turn almost non-existent, like pinhole size. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like confused. It's like, it, it, her clan would like, oh, it's an elf woman. She's not going to make it. <laughs> but that, no, she was there personally at each of our births. And and Dave's like, oh, were you there for mine when I hatched? He's like, yes. She just, just pats her on the head. Yes, dear, I was there. Don't worry. I didn't leave you out. She, she's like, mm -hmm. yay. <laughs> she's too happy. Who's still there? No, uh, j just just uh, our current party. Like, well, I was around, but I didn't personally see, uh, you know, be there during his uh, bir during his birth. And I was like, huh. Then why? He, he's asking. I was like, then why were you there for them? And all, and just, Mr. Oz, there's something you're not telling us, but the followers Bane that you might have a connection with. I was like, like I said, I'll tell everyone about it later. Don't worry, I'm against them. I'll let you know that. Which is why I was mortified when you said their name. But, uh, He was like, and I was like, I'm pretty sure I fought one of them in the past, like when I was a kid, or at least my clan did, I think. I, I was still trying to, uh, this was back when I blindly killed things, just because I thought it was how fighting was supposed to be. You just kill for no reason. Well, that was just what I was taught, anyway. Uh... uh Dave's like, hmm, followers of Bane. She's trying to think back. It's like, hmm, I might have performed for them, maybe? No. Well, I don't know. Maybe. Blight, he's like, Blight is just being quiet. Uh, he doesn't really want to talk about this. It's 
So everyone's had some sort of run-in or involvement with the followers of Bane. Uh, Miss Straw is against them. She's, she's mentioned, she's revealed that much. But um, her whole connection with them, though, is uh, she doesn't want to talk about it quite yet until things progress a little more. Also, she uh, looks to you as a... Um, did you notice the star-shaped pattern on your butt cheek? She just blatantly says that, and everyone's just looking at you. You do... This is part of the lore thing that I was making. Um, you do have a birthmark in the shape of a green star. Yeah, it's actual green on your butt, and it couldn't be removed or anything like that. However, no one found any harm to it, so you just left it there. So she looks at us. Do you all have a star-shaped marking on your body of somewhere? Everyone's just looking at each other and then looking at her. It's like, yeah. yeah. De De Deus reveals, um, like, underneath uh, where mostly where she walks, like on a part of her snake body where she's walking or she's scuffling along, uh, she, like, kind of just rolls it over. There's a star-shaped mark on her scales. Yeah. Uh, hers is orange, but it's not on the orange part of her scales. It's on like the, the more pinkish part, so it stands out. Yeah, Blight has it on his uh, on his chest, like on the, the right side of his pectorals. Right. Uh, Na opens up her palm, and she has one as well. Yeah. Yeah, because you're a dwarf. You're Stinky dwarf is like, yeah, it's on your butt. <laughs> it's like, well, you'll find out about those. Those birthmarks have a special meaning, which is why I was there for each of your births. Uh, De Deus, um, she never thought anything. She just thought she had like a tattoo at birth. <laughs> but, um, Mr. Ra notices. Oh, go. <laughs> Power Rangers. Yeah, it's morphin time. <laughs> you pull down your pants. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, Mr. Ron notices to Deus that um, uh, Deus is wearing a necklace with a, I uh, can't remember what color it was, it was an orange star, I think. Hold on. Uh, no, it's just a star, I'm going to say it's an orange star. Uh, Deus is wearing a necklace with a uh, orange star, um, like as like the necklace piece. And uh, Miss Straw is looking at this all of a sudden. She didn't notice it until just like now when we're all talking about stars and butts. And um, she asked Dad, like, where, where did you get that necklace? She's like, oh, oh, um, she's trying to remember. Like, uh, a fan years ago gave this to me just out of like a token of admiration. I get those sometimes. But this one uh, I thought was really nice, so I keep it on me at all times. I have no idea. It's just a fan after a uh, performance I did back in uh, Neverwinter. Ah, oh, it was at uh, a festival, the one that uh, my sister was telling us about uh, a couple of years back. Um, yeah, it's just some random person, like trying to remember this was a few years ago but uh, she can't remember exactly what the person looked like he was a guy though young guy human uh, i can't remember much else he, he just uh said he really liked my uh my music and all that and how i performed and did my storytelling and um yeah just gave me the necklace as like a 
token of admiration. Like I said, I get those a lot, so I didn't think anything of it, but yeah, I just took it and I thought it was cool, so I wear it all the time. Mm hmm. It's like. Yeah. She points back at you, is like, hang it! She just points at your face. Hang it. As in pointing at you, calling you it, and saying you should be hanged. <laughs> He's like, no, I keep all of my tokens from my fans. If they were kind enough to give me something just because they liked the stuff that I do, then I'm not going to get rid of it. Besides, it hasn't done anything. She says that uh, all she's not going to get rid of any of the stuff that she got from her fans because they were nice enough to give her things just out of... Uh, admiration, but she's not the kind of person who, you know, uh, throws away free stuff, really. She has, like, in, in her backpack, she has, like, a bunch of, like, just random stuff, like, uh, so, some of it's, like, locks of hair from fans, like, uh, creepy stuff. Like, yeah, so, so, some, of, some of the fans, they didn't have much money, so they just gave me, like, Random things, right? Uh, I try getting any. See, I always whenever I get something new, I always go to get it checked out, see if there's like anything, you know, cursed or bad about it. It's like, yeah, it's all normal junk, but I just keep it, just you know, sentimental value. She has a bag of junk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's just like tiny little trinkets that basically weigh nothing. <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's just in with her backpack, like all of her little little trinkets. Yeah, but uh, anyway, um, Miss Straw is going to go with Sildar to talk about like the whole Fowler's Bane and all that. She can give more information to him about it. Uh, we have a chance to go do our shopping and all that, and then we have it's like. She, she turns to you and is like, you'll find out later on. This is something that I need to talk to with Sildar alone. She just, she just like, uh, flaps her hand. And is like, don't worry, don't worry. You'll find out all the same stuff soon. And she looks at it and is like, don't ever lose that necklace. And then she goes off with Sildar to Town Hall. And we have a chance to do our shopping. Yeah. All right. So first, I'd say we unload all of our weapons and stuff that we found that we don't plan to keep. Yeah. Um, so you said you're going to keep that crossbow? Yes. Yeah. And a quiver? Okay. Uh, so let's see. I have I already totaled it up. Uh, oh, no, I did that on the calculator. Bolt days, yeah. 20, 20 crossbow bolts. Um, so let's see. Just do this quick math. So when I totaled all the weapons up that, you're, that you got from the store, it came up to 80, but since you're going to keep the crossbow, that's uh, and one quiver. Okay, so you're going to sell the other stuff? Just keep... Okay, so... I don't have your character sheet up. So, Lin oh, okay. Um, so we go into Lunin's shop. Uh, she sees that we had to have like shitloads of weapons. Also, I'm change her hit dice here. Uh, da -da -da. She, she already figures you're gonna sell the stuff, so she kind of has like some money already set up. And uh, I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna delete stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, you already have pickaxe. Yeah. And I'm going to sell the crossbow bolts case. Yeah. And just a second, I'm going to do uh, crossbow bolts. Let's do this. Bolt. Yep. 
But if you click on it and then like move the cursor, you'll see that there's it's a 0. Uh, 0. 0.075. It's just that it can't show any more than like three digits at a decimal point. Yeah, so I just put that in and ooh, switch that to resource so you can manually check it off whenever. Okay, and uh, the remaining stuff, you get uh, 54 gold for it. Yeah, so add 54 gold to your thing. You have too much gold. <laughs> okay. And uh, Nas gonna do the same. Let's see, what does she have? Uh, she has four spears. I just gotta add this up real quick with my brain. Let's see. Plus ten plus fifteen plus twenty-five. Uh, she's also going to sell her two uh, crossbow bolt cases. So she gets do, 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 uh, 56 gold. Yeah, she has over 500 finally. <laughs> she has money. Yeah. That stuff. All right. Yay. Okay. Oh, and her rage uses. Switch that back up. Okay. Yay. I already did all the other characters, uh, like shopping and stuff like that in between sessions. Yeah. So they're already fully equipped. And uh, do, is there anything you want to buy? The carriage and all, yeah, the wagon and all that. Uh, so yeah, we go over to Barathens. Uh, he's like, oh, hey guys, I was wondering when you're gonna show up with that discount. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, you, you want to get the carriage? Yeah. Uh, no, there's just a carriage. That is the like the the, the highest weight vehicle that you can get. Uh, however, you still have that wagon that you originally got. Um, so I was uh, doing some cost stuff here for you. So the carriage is 100 gold, but cut in half would be 50. Um, but it can carry 600 pounds of stuff. The wagon can carry uh, 400 pounds worth of stuff. You can attach the wagon onto the uh, carriage, like behind the carriage, like how on the back of a truck it has that little um, that little thing where you attach stuff onto. Um, it has you can attach it like that, so you can have like a thousand pounds worth of like just stuff being dragged around because the feed for like the horse uh, it weighs ten pounds each for one day's worth of feed. All right, so like if you're out on the go for a long time, you're gonna need a decent amount of feed, but that's also really heavy. So having like the wagon to like hold like just uh, stuff, random shit. Eh. Yeah, you can get like a tarp or something like that to go over the top of it, so it's like covered. Yeah. Okay, uh, I've already got like the stuff like preset in, so I'm just gonna say that's a. All right, so <coughs> uh, why is my computer being slow? Uh, no, you're gonna have to buy a second horse, but you're gonna get half off because the the um, let's see the uh, carriage and wagon together will carry a thousand pounds worth of stuff. But the horses, uh, they each can only carry or pull like 540 pounds worth of stuff. So like one horse is just barely able to uh, carry the carriage if the carriage isn't full, right? Yeah. So like if you had the carriage just by itself and it was at full capacity, uh, one horse wouldn't be enough anyway. So you would need two 
regardless of if you didn't keep the wagon. Right? So, yeah, you're going to have to buy a second horse, and you might as well keep the wagon to have as just extra capacity. Because the... Yep. So, let's see. All, all together, I've added this up, because you're going to need the carriage. Uh, you're going to need, like, a barrel. Um, it, the barrels are, like, dirt cheap. They only weigh... Uh, sorry, they weigh... Not weigh, cost. Christ. Two gold. But that's going to be... Whoop. Uh, no. Yeah. Because all that stuff has kind of gone bad. So the barrels are all, like, dirty and gross. Besides, you mostly just need it for, like, carrying water. Yeah. But you can get, like, an extra barrel for, like, alcohol and stuff like that. But uh, the barrels, uh, they hold 70 pounds of liquid each. Right? Yeah. I mean, the barrels themselves only weigh, like, a couple pounds, maybe. But like when they're full, they hold like, you know, 70 pounds of liquid. Or or whatever, you know, you're putting into it. Uh, so they're basically like kegs, like the big keg things. But wooden. Uh, so let's see, you're going to get... How many barrels do you want to get? Because, remember, the carriage and the wagon and all that, like I'd say put like the barrels in the wagon... And like the feed and stuff like that in there, yeah, and then have the carriage for like uh, mostly for us to sit in. <laughs> Four, oh, okay. So let's see. Five, all right. So that'd be. Doing some math there. Yeah, okay, nice. Okay. All right, so carriage, uh, five barrels, um, an extra horse, and oh yeah, you're also going to need saddles for the horses, like 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 the saddles and the ropes and stuff like that to attach them, and also in case you need to ride them. Um, Having saddles on there, yeah, harnesses and all that. Um, all all together, it's a hundred ninety-two gold, but cut in half, it's ninety-six gold. Ten feet. All right, so ten feet. That's like five copper per feet, so fifty copper. So. 96 in total and 50. Co or I'll just type it into the chat. Uh, so this is the this is with the discount already added in. There. 96 gold and 50 copper. That's with the discount. And I'll, and I'll set up a, a thing with the wagon and all. Well, I kind of already have a thing here. But uh, where did I put it? Uh, where was wagon and horse? So I'm going to do this. Uh, you already have that. But you... You can't get that here in town. You'd have to go to Neverwinter for that. Yeah. You can only get, like, just, you know, the, the, the smaller scale kit for, like, making stuff at home or on the go. But to set up a, like, a big mobile thing, you would need to go to Neverwinter and get that. And that'd be a bit pricey, too. Yeah. So, let's see. You're going to get another 10 feed. So, you're at 25 feed. 25 days worth of feed for your horses. And you have two horses, so that will take uh, two feed per day. Hmm. 
I'd say you should probably like top it off to 30 so then it's even. So it's 15 days worth like for each horse. So that's uh, so that's a nerf. 5 times 5, 20, yeah, 25. So another 25 copper. And I just put in that uh, thing in the party stuff where the uh, the wag your wagon and horses and all that stuff is. Yeah, I just adjusted it there. All right. Uh, let's see, I did Nas stuff. Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, Nas is also going to buy twelve rations, I guess. Yeah, I think you have like 15, because you bought extra, like when we first came to town. Now I was going to top her up to 20, so that was 12 that she bought, and that's 5 copper, or five silver per uh, uh, per uh, thingy. At least I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Adventuring gear, let's see, uh, rations, I'm pretty sure like 5 silver each. Just going to take a quick look here. Uh, yep, yeah, five silver each. Shopping, the video game. <laughs> so she bought 12, 12 times, huh? is that 60 silver that she just spent? My god, all of her silver is gone. <laughs> well, no, she has lots of silver. Uh, let's see, there's not really anything else that she wants or needs. Ooh, she is going to buy... Nah, she's good on that. Uh, she's gonna hold on to her stuff. Yeah, so she she's good on her stuff. Everyone else is good too. Oh, I already did all their stuff. It's just uh, you and Nah. Whenever you're shopping, I do you guys together. But then, um... all right, no, you haven't sold those yet. Yeah, you, ha you have to go uh, to uh, Halia down here. Uh, actually, uh, what was it? Beaver pelts, I think it was. Yeah, the beaver pelts. Uh, those you can sell here. I can bring up your uh, character sheet for myself here to see, because like tread, like yeah. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so yeah. that's uh, twelve gold you would get for the whole set. Yeah, the beaver pelts you can sell to him. Um, yeah, but like gemstones and like gold bars or something like that, uh, tr like treasure treasures, right? Uh, those would be, uh, you have to go to like a, the miners exchange. Yeah. yeah, she doesn't particularly like us, so she probably wouldn't really give us a good deal now. <laughs> Yeah, so I'd say hold on to that stuff. Yeah. No, I was going to do the same. She doesn't particularly like. Uh, well, it's just us that she doesn't really like. Like, the other ones, she, she doesn't, she didn't know that we were in league with them. It was just us. So when she saw Miss Straw, she didn't really understand it, but uh, she assumed that she was betrayed by us or something because we didn't get the notes, and she saw the notes being handed off. So she doesn't like Na and Reorg, but everyone else, she doesn't really know anything. I would say they they already did theirs anyway, so. All right. So that's all for the shopping. Uh, there's not really anything else available to us in this town for, like, you know, upgrades and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Uh... I'm trying to think here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So yeah. Uh, not really. Like if you're gonna invest in the businesses, um, get to like better stuff. Um, ooh, actually, well, it's not an investment. Lenine, um, she does have an upgrade for your armor. You're you're wearing a chainmail, I believe. Yeah, chainmail. Uh, she does have a set of uh, 
check here what it's called. You, like the next on the list of heavy armor. <laughs> she does have a set of splint mail. Or like splint armor. Splint mail armor. And uh, it's normally 200 gold, but she'll give it to you for 100. And um, oh. it's a 17 armor instead of 16, like your chain mail. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, and then I'm going to add into your thing here. Uh, yeah, uh, chain mail. I just got to find out the prices here. I got them in my thing. Let's see, chain mail is. Uh, Oh, chainmail. Uh, so yeah, she'll buy that chainmail off of you for 75 gold. Right? And then sell you... So basically 25 gold is what you lose. Because you still have to spend... Like, the, the splint mail is going to be 100. And you're only getting 75 from the chainmail. So basically you only lose 25 in total. From your initial amount. Right, so I just got to get your thing here. So delete the chainmail from your list. Just gotta make sure this is the right one. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, you did not delete it. Hold on. No. That's fine. Yeah, your max weight is 300 pounds. So you're over 200. Yeah. Well, actually, it's all the junk that you have, like from your um, your your uh, starter pack, like the, uh, the I think it's the Dungeoneers pack. Uh, well, most of that you're gonna need for when you explore in dungeons, so you can't really like do anything with it. Let's uh, see. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. And plus, you get that pickaxe. <laughs> And I would say that it would be on your person whenever you're going out exploring and doing stuff like that, so uh, it's going to add to your weight. Anyway. Uh, nah, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have a whole bunch of armor now. Yay. All right, so not much else to do. Miss Straw's finishing off, and she's coming back to us. She had to like just basically do paperwork and like write down like um, like uh, like uh, testimonies about like stuff that they've done, stuff that she knows about them, so they have so they can so still our contact with his, uh, his organization and all that, so they can you know start going uh, fighting back against them. Cause like like he said, they are a terrorist organization pretty much. Um. If you want to know, they're called the Followers of Bane. If you want, you can roll a religion check. Yeah, religion check. That was a history, but I'm talking about religion. History is just to find out stuff that they've done. Okay, then you don't know, you don't know who this Bane is. Yeah, you don't... Yeah, you just know that they're a group of people that pay you for fighting. <laughs> but uh, you never really thought about the details. It's like, hmm, job, money, kill. Gotcha. Anyway, so I'd say it's about, like, uh, say our shopping and all the stuff that Mr. had to do. Uh, I'd say all together, it's about, like, 8, 8.30 in the morning. We got up at, like, 6-ish. And uh, so, yeah, we can head out of town. Are you ready? You want to head out of town, or you still want other stuff to fumble around with? Blight uh, points out, I was like, well, if we're leaving town now, um, so he's bringing out his map of, like, uh, I'll just move us over to the map. He's been writing down on a map, like, all the details and stuff like that. Uh, so all of our jobs are basically up in this area over here, over in the top uh, right here, right? 
like Coneyberry, Olawalwell, Wyvern Tor, Agatha's Lair. Uh, those places are all the missions that we have. Yeah. They're all kind of in one spot, so we can go up in that area and do them all easily. Or, you know, a lot quicker, instead of going back and forth, back and forth. Right, because uh, we have one job that's all the way up here, over in Thunder Tree, to find uh, Radon, that druid. Right, so that's only one job up there. Everything else is over in one spot, so we can... He suggests that we go there and do all those, and then go do like some go do the one that's really far away that may have a higher risk to them. And while we're doing that, we're gonna he's gonna be like basically deciphering like he's gonna try to figure out the exact location of Cragmall Castle because he he know we know that it's in the wilderness. But where exactly in the wilderness, we don't know. So instead of wandering around aimlessly in the forest, because we wouldn't be able to take the wagon in there, we'd have to go on foot. Because it's not a carriage and a wagon through just rough wilderness with no trails or anything like that. Uh, yeah, we can't really do that. So it's going to be on foot, which is more dangerous and more hazardous. So, yeah, so... Go up to Coneyberry, which is the, uh, I'll, I'll be moving the thing. You, you have no control over it. No, you, you state roles that you, you state what you want to do, and then I tell you what role you would need. Uh, it would be, um, over in your tools. Yeah, land bit. Oh yeah, you, uh, you're not used to one driving two horses and two having two horses carrying like a carriage and a wagon attachment. However, your big setup. Uh, let's see, I'll just zoom in a bit here. So the wagon, I'll just zoom it out so you can see what it looks like. That's that's the carriage part, sir. So it's got like all this stuff set up onto it. And uh, you can add more things onto it and all that. But, uh, yeah, and then there's just like a plain wagon attachment with a tarp over it. Anyway, let's put that right down there. And uh, from Fandolin all the way up to uh, Coneyberry up there in the corner. Uh, I say I say that's about four days. And, uh, oh, sorry. Eating bread and drinking water makes me hiccup for some reason. Uh, it's going to take about four days travel. It would have taken us a little bit longer, but because you're not, you're still getting used to this whole thing. You're, you're making the horses go a bit slower just till you get used to it. So it's going to take just about the same amount of time. I, I, I'd say if we went on foot, it would be about five, six days. I'd say it's cut down to four because we are all in a vehicle together. But, but it's not as fast as it would be until you get used to it. Yeah. But you're, you're handling it just fine. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to say, let's see. Uh, that is, oh, shit, first roll. So, the first day, uh, we have an encounter. Yeah. Uh, yep, yeah, you can roll your perception. No, I was going to uh, do that as what? Where the hell is her? Oh, this is the wrong section. Oh, yeah. Um, so we stop off here. Um, we're just... You did perception, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we um, we're going to go like have camp and all that after the first day, and um, so we stop off the side of the road. We go off into like the field a little bit, and uh, we decide to like park into the forest a little bit. 
and uh, let the horses like you know get got some hay or the, the feed for them and all that, and let them rest. Uh, we do have the barrels right now. Um, they are filled with water just for like traveling and filling up our flasks or our water skins. So we have we have a good supply of water with us. That's what the five barrels are. Uh, I'll set that all up afterwards. Um, so I said enough. Uh, just before we end up making camp, we do hear something in the area. Like y y you heard some noises in the area. So. No, I was gonna see if she notices anything. She's gonna just give like a big old sniff with her big old nose. She's gonna get her character sheet open again. Doodly do. Uh, I know. Uh, perception. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, she has proficiency. Anyway, um, she's sniffing. She smells. There, there's a big, there's a big old beast or something in the forest. Doesn't smell like a monster. Just smells like a large animal. She can't quite tell what it is, but she can smell it. It's close by. Yeah. Uh, um, like. This here would be a rock in the ground, like it, it's like in the ground, but it's coming out, and it's got like moss over it and all that. The the rock, yes, would be higher ground, but the trail part right here, that's just the trail that's in the dirt. It. Yeah, it is. The, the the rock part is elevated. It's kind of sloped. It looks like this, you see those large rocks in the ground that are coming out of the ground. But it's like so merged in with like the grass and the dirt and all that. It just looks like basically a rocky pimple to the ground. But yeah, you can you can climb up. You can just walk up that actually. Uh, I'd say you have. Yeah, since you're in heavy armor, uh, Blight is just going to fly up to see. He's gonna roll his stealth. I'm just gonna open everyone's character sheets real quick here. Light, uh, straw. Alrighty, so light for it though. Oh my god, they're so slow to open. Open, I say. That's not even the right character sheet. And blight. There we go. I'm going to have him roll stealth. He's going to just fly up ahead and, like, kind of just get an idea. Ooh, damn, not bad. So he's, he's flying up. He spots something over by. over in, like, this direction. Right? Uh, there's a waterfall over there. And he can't quite pick out what is there, but he sees an animal drinking from there. Like, it's it's at, like, the water's edge. It's just drinking, but he can only see its butt. Like, he's looking at it from behind, so he can't see what exactly the animal is until it turns around. But there's a big animal over there. He flies back down, and he's like, yeah, there's a, there's a huge animal over there. Um, it's just drinking water right now, but it's pretty freaking big. Like, it's it's bigger than you, Nah. And nah is like, just looking at everyone, looking at you, he's like, yeah, food. She, she draws her weapon, but she's like, quietly, she's gonna try to, uh, sneak over. Uh, she's gonna sneaky sn Are you on arrow or are you on measurement? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Nala's gonna try stealth, see if she can sneak up on the thing. Oh, damn, she just... You're, you're looking at her feet moving, right? She's moving up on it, but you hear no sound from her feet. 
You know, she's walking on, like, rocks and gravel and grass and all that stuff. There's no noise from her feet. So she's gonna, like, just be sneaking up. And she's gonna, like, just leer around the bushes and all that. Uh, uh, she notices what it is. And then she backs up a bit. Oh, I gotta switch him over to this. So yeah, she backs off a little bit when she sees what it is. Uh, nope, an owl bear. Uh, so yeah, she's just gonna she's gonna sneak back to the group with her stealth still. Um, yeah, it's a freaking huge ass owl bear. Um, hmm. Yeah. Okay, you have your, you have a hunting trap, don't you? Oh. Hmm. I would say, um, you know, we'll roll stealth, see if you can sneak, because you're wearing heavy armor. Or if you want, you could hand it to one of us, and we could try doing it. <laughs> um, I say, if anything, it would be Nah. She's, uh, she's grown up around that stuff, so... Miss <laughs> no. Yeah. So she she gets what you're going at. She remembers uh in the red brand you were trying to do that with the bugbears, but you couldn't quite get the trap. And then the bugbears noticed that, that there was a failed trap and then they got angry that they didn't even notice it, so that means it would have worked if it was set up properly. Uh so yeah, she's going to I'd say that would just be a dexterity to set up the trap. Uh, or actually, I, I would say that would probably be more of a survival, since we're setting up a trap for hunting. Survival. Oh, boy. So, uh, she's like, okay, she so got the pittens in the ground, right? But she's trying to get the rope, like, attached to them to, like, set up, like, a tripwire trap sort of thing. And, uh, she's, like, she's fumbling with the rope, and then she gets fed up and gives up on it. He's like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll try. Uh, he's going to do the same thing. He's going to roll his survival. Oh, damn. The pittens are already, like, set up in place. He just put, like, it's like tying a shoe. He just puts the rope in, ties it up, puts the other side of the rope in, ties it up, and it's done. Like, it's seconds. He did it in seconds, and now it's just like, fuck it. Show off. Uh, real quick, before we do that, I am going to go use the washroom. I'm drinking a lot of water. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. I was like, Nah is actually going to come with you because, one, barbarian.
No, oh, okay. And you're and you're just gonna like. Oh, okay. So yeah, I, I would say that she can just get herself up there, but the others. Let's see, so Miss Straw, she's gonna roll herself a stealth. Oh damn. Mm -hmm. So she's going to also hide like up here in the bushes, maybe. She just disappears. Whoosh. Mm -hmm. Blight is also going to give it a shot. Damn. He, he just flies up into the trees and hides. And she's like, huh? Already it is. First day out and we're hunting animals. Uh, she's she's going to, she like, as she's scruffling, like, with her snake body, as she's moving, she's making a lot of noise, but she kind of just like goes off into a bush over here. Did you roll stealth? Roll a stealth? Or are you not trying to roll stealth? Or? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, so you, you're just going to yell there to it? Okay. So, uh, as you say that, the, the owl bear that's over there, um, drinking, hears this, he turns around, he's like, his feet, like, you, when it walks, when it's, like, charging, um, you feel the ground shaking, right? So it crashes through the bush, and it comes out through here. Right, and it sees you, it's just stopping, and it's just growling, and hooing, <laughs> just growling. See a just giant bear monster go, whoo, <laughs> because it's an owl. No, yeah, it's just growling at you, it's going to eat you, it's huge. Throw a rock, uh, just, uh, just roll dexterity. You miss. You, you throw it. Basically, when you, when you throw a rock, it goes from your feet and it just like lands here on the ground. It's just looking at you. And uh, all the noise ended up attracting uh, its mate. Yeah. And I was like, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. You hear in the bushes, like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, they're all technically in still, well, except for Deus. She's just hiding in the bush, but her tail's poking out a bit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but everyone else is hidden pretty well. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna say everyone roll. Yeah, I'm just going to do this first. Yeah, turn. Well, unless everyone else gets garbage, which is possible. Uh, I just got to get the monster sheet here. Uh, and, yeah. Okay, so I will do... Why is it showing it like this? Ah, I hate it when it does that. It, it, it's showing it as a regular character sheet. Hold on. Ah, I hate the compendium sometimes. It uh, doesn't like to work. Yeah. Don't worry about that thing. That was just from dragging and dropping the character sheet over. Why is it not showing it? Oh, I hate this thing so much. I hate this thing so much. All right, try this again. Mm 
Why is it not working? Okay. Okay, I'm just going to keep it like this. Actually, I know. Oh, I love it when roll 20 doesn't work. <laughs> All right. Have her do her initiative. And the straw. I wish I knew how to do video editing so I can edit out like parts like this. We're just waiting. And anyone watching will be bored. Bored! Unless I'm just weird the whole time and say entertaining things, but I'm not really an entertaining person unless I have like stuff going on. Boring. Boring. Yay. All right, I got everything set up. This is being a this is being a derp. And battle music. Okay, so blight's going right off the bat. And, oh, he, oh yeah, he can get there. He's going to fly on over with his spear. And he's going to jab down with his big old... Well, it's not a giant spear. It's just a regular spear. Uh, and he's attacking him with a spear with two hands. Oh, damn. That hits. Mm-hmm. 
He does 10 damage, and then he is going to basically do like an axe kick as his uh, unarmed strike. Uh, 15, does that hit? Oh yeah, that hits. Yeah, he does another 8 damage to this guy. He does, he has a good, nice first start. Nas turn. Since she's still sneaking, it doesn't, it doesn't know about her yet. Uh, oh damn, she ended up risking hitting you. Uh, she's going to, hmm, she wouldn't be able to do much. She wouldn't be able to get her extra, uh, surprise attack. Oh, she's just going to go up and go into rage against the, the first owl bear here. She's going to go into rage. Use up a rage use here. Uh, where exactly do we set it up to? Okay, I'll say that, uh, so it's like right here. Right here. I say she goes into rage and eggs the thing on. And uh, she can't quite reach him from where she is. No, but she can. Uh, she'll shoot a, her bow at it. She doesn't get rage damage, but she still hits it. Okay, she's just enraged for safety reasons. All right, Miss Straw's turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She can hit just fine from there. She's gonna shoot her longbow. Uh, longbow. Oh damn! Oh no! <sighs> Yeah. Hmm? Oh, that was no. Yeah. Oh, okay, the severity is not bad. Um, so no, uh, blight is in the air. The arrow shoots past. Right? It almost hits you. Like you see that going past, and it almost hits blight, but it just passes like underneath his wing. And uh, he sees it going by and almost goes through like the flap of his wing. Uh, it doesn't hit the bugbear or the owl bear. It doesn't hit him. It doesn't hit you. It just hits the rock and shatters. But everyone's like, oh, like sorry. Or actually, no. What am I doing? Because she's sneaking. She has advantage on that first attack, so it's a thirteen, which actually hits. <laughs> I forgot she's sneaking. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I just had this whole Labyrinth thing set up. Anyway. Yeah, she does damage to it. <laughs> Good God. Anyway, uh, this owl bear, it's uh, the one by Blight. Uh, it stands up on its hind legs and it's matching basically in terms of height. Uh, where Blight is flying at, because he had to land down a bit in order to attack it, but he was still airborne. Um, but this thing stands up on his hind legs and takes a swipe at it. It's 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 able to reach where Blight is. Yeah, and it has multi-attack because it's an asshole. Alright, so... Beak! 21. Oh god, that hits. 10 damage. Oh, that's not too, too bad. But yeah, he gets smacked from that. It just like pecks at it with its giant beak. Just like jabs him in the gut. And then he's gonna slash at him with his claws. Oh god, those also hit. And does another 8 damage. Oh Jesus Christ. Why did I not make him use patient defense? What is wrong with me? Uh, so yeah, he's uh, not looking too good already. And these things are giant. <laughs> anyway, this owl bear is gonna run up and uh, try to attack now. Uh, it 
activates the trap, I'm just going to roll. Uh, let's see. Since it just trips up. Uh, actually, I would roll its acrobatics. Since it's tripping over something. Just dexterity. Oh, shit. Let's see if I can roll a DC for it. Uh, it basically just bursts through the rope. The rope is fine, but the pythons that it was uh, attached to, they are yanked out of the ground. Uh, yeah, you can still collect them afterwards. Okay. Uh, however, Nog gets opportunity attack because of her loss, pull mastery, and she's in rage. That hits, so it does 8 damage. Uh, bring some up there. Alright, and then it's going to attack Nog. And it's gonna just as it was running, it's gonna jab into her with its beak. That misses. And then it's gonna swipe at her with her with its claws. That also misses. She didn't even need to go into rage. It was like when she goes into rage to reduce damage, she doesn't even get hit to begin with and wastes it. Uh Days is out here. Yeah, uh, she is going to See, the next one that would attack would be that guy, so uh, she's going to uh, Vicious Mockery. Oh, damn. So he's got to roll. He's like, hey, you dumb bear. You can't hit something in the air like that, you big dummy. We're going to eat you. <laughs> Base oh, it failed. Um, she used Vicious Mockery, and she basically said that you can't hit things that fly. And then she said that she's gonna, we're going to eat you. And it failed the Wisdom saving throw. So it takes four damage, and it has disadvantage on the next attack. I have to remember that it has disadvantage, because Blight is going to die. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and your turn. You could throw something at it. Oh yeah, you can you can run over there. That would take your full movement. So if you're planning to jump off of it, uh, it wouldn't be till next turn. But you can attack its head still because it's standing up high. Okay. Well, from where you're standing, you're actually higher than its legs, so it'd be kind of hard to do that. Because it's standing up, and you're on a high rise, but, like, the, the rock goes upwards. So uh, you're, like, at its torso level. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. And, uh, yeah, 23 hits. And you do max goddamn damage. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, gets hit by your battle axe. Uh, it makes a, it hits hard enough to, like, make it uh, roar a bit, but then it's just angry and it turns to you. Um, okay. Uh, let's see, 28 plus 15, that is 40, do, 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 43. It's taken damage. And that's the only thing you got for your turn. Unless you wanted to use Action Surge. Because we'll be camping after this. Alright, Action Surge. You got another attack, you got another full action, basically. Okay. Uh, yeah. After that first hit, um, 
Oh, God. Uh, yeah, after that first hit, you got some decent damage in there, but um, when you try to hit it again, it basically uses its giant claw and backs hand your battle axe out of your hands, and it goes, like, flying over onto the ground, like, over in this direction. You're you're just really you're just an angry dwarf. Uh, Blight is like, ah, oh, he's got like big huge gashes on him now. I like, damn. Uh, what does he have? He has a healing potion, but instead he's going to use patient defense as his bonus action, and he's just going to attack with his spear. Uh, spire. Oh, that misses. <laughs> Poopy. Oh well. Nas turn. She's in second turn of rage. Now she can attack. Oh yeah. That hits. Uh seven damage. Yeah. She slashes with her halberd. She smacks it across the face. It's a little pissed off. It didn't take too too much damage, but Enough to keep it focused on her, as we got the range people in the background who need to be like kept out of harm's way. <laughs> and she's gonna tap on her pull strike, which misses. Alright, Miss Shroud's turn. She's going to. Oh, what's her distance? Uh, Miss Shroud, what can you do? I just gotta check the range on this boy. Oh, she has to go up and touch him. Uh, what's her movement speed? I don't think she can reach. No, she cannot. All right, she's going to use Healing Word to heal. Uh, pff, where the hell? So, yeah, she's going to yeah, she's going to use Healing Word at level two. So six plus one, so he only heals seven. <laughs> but that's that's still all right. Uh, gets him up to a little over half. He'll be able to take a hit. And it's gonna get rid of the slot. And I don't think she has anything else. No, it's all. Ah, uh, no, she. she because uh, the healing took her normal action. Uh, she could, but she would prefer to stay in the distance. Oh, actually, no. She can attack because Healing Word only uses a bonus action. All right, she's going to use her longbow. For the love of Christ. Yeah, because that one would be the crit fail, because she's technically revealed herself from uh, the first attack. And, uh, yeah, no, she misses, and she hits Blight. I'm, actually, this is roll severity. Oh, no, wait, no, that's a... Uh, oh, that's the... So that would be... Oh, she just scares Blight again. She She misses... Like, her arrow goes off, like, just past him. He's like, ha! Ah. He's like, he got healed. And then, he's, then all of a sudden, there's an arrow coming past him. He's like, stop doing that! Come on! So, yeah, that's her turn. Like, sorry! <laughs> oh, boy, that first owl bear by Blight has disadvantage on the first attack. It does, well, he's attacking you. Uh, it is the 25, not the critical. What? what the fuck? With disadvantage, it's still got a 25. Yeah, uh, let's see. It does the, see, the 10 is the critical damage, so it does the 7, take away 3, so you only take... Four damage. Just take four uh, off your um, 
temporary hit points. So you have one temporary hit point left. Ooh, actually, that reminds me. Uh, I'm just going to add five more HP back onto Blight. Because the temporary hit points was taken off first. So he took five less damage than what he actually did. Alright. Yep, yep. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then it's going to attack with its claws. Uh, see, it has the 22 because it was only the first attack that has the advantage, which amounted to nothing. Ah, <sighs> so you still get hit. For 13, so 10. So you're, you, you, well, 9 taken off your regular HP, because 1 temporary hit point. So you have no more temporary hit points. You only took 9 off your HP, which isn't so bad. Alright, this other boy's turn. He's gonna just blindly attack the Gnar Gnurgles. That, uh, I believe that hits. Hold on. Yeah, that hits. Why isn't that not showing? There we go. So, 6, cut in half. She only takes three damage. She basically just gets like headbutted by this giant bear monster with a beak. And it's just like getting stabbed by like, I don't know, a thumbtack or something or a nail. She just brushes it off. And then attacks with her claw its claws and misses. Uh dance is turn. Uh She's going to move slightly over to here, and she is going to uh, Oh, did I not give her a bow? I guess not. Okay, she does not have a bow. I thought I gave her one. I should have made her buy one. Damn it! Oh well. What? No, but she's a bird. She has other stuff. Uh, she's going to... Hmm. Uh, I guess they'll just do Vicious Mockery again. So it's got to do Wisdom Saving Throw. It's like, you dumb bear, we're going to eat you, and we're going to make your family watch. Oh, it survives, though. It passes. It doesn't take any damage, either. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, it just looks at Deus and just ignores her and goes back to fighting you. <laughs> You're like, oh, stupid bear. Hmm. Right, your turn. It's, it, it's standing on its hind legs still, by the way. Oh, you're going to, um, are you trying to run away from it, or just trying to, like, dodge its attacks? Stay, you're going to stay where you are, you're just going to dodge its incoming attacks? Oh, that would be the dodge action, or evasion. Yeah, dodge, and it takes your whole turn. Basically, it's like patient defense. But it takes your whole turn instead of a bonus action. Yeah. Yep, so. So you're just going to do that instead of attack? You have your morning star. Oh, okay. No. Blight's not at half health. Blight has uh, 21 HP. Merida, temporary hit points, he had that. Yep. So you're just going to... Okay, you're just going to take your time, so... Its next attack against you will be uh, with disadvantage. Uh, that will be for until your next turn starts. So it's both of its attacks will have disadvantage. Anyway, that's your turn? Yeah. Okay. Light's turn. Uh, 
he yeah he's just he's gonna stay within its range he's just gonna move behind it and get some flanking and he is going to attack with a spear the 23 hits and it does 13 damage yay so that's a uh, 56 it's taking some damage and then he's gonna kick it square in the butt it's a big old bear butt that hits he has done like the most damage. <laughs> uh, let's see, so that plus seven is do, 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 do. all right. That's Blight's turn. And Ganala's turn. She's on third turn of rage. She is going to slash down with her halberd against its face. That misses. And then she's going to swing back up with her pull strike, try to also hit its face. That hits. Does 8 damage. Pretty much. Yeah. Oh, sorry, that's uh, 10 damage, so it's got extra. There we go. Okay, Miss Straw's turn. Uh, she's going to just move. Or actually, what's her? 35, so... Oh yeah, she's gonna move to there. She has a clear her shot, and she is going to try attacking again with her goddamn longbow. Longbow away. That finally hits. She's not showing. Yeah. It's just lagging. Uh, just the, she got the 19, but goddamn it! Every time she attacks, there's a, there's a fucking there's a one in there. That one. She, anyway, yeah, she does nine damage. So that would be. Ooh, this one is taking taking a pounding. He's still he's still fighting, still angry, but uh, yeah, no, he's he's bleeding a lot. Do... Yes, I like this one more. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's her turn. Uh, that Owlbear, he's focused on you still. Uh, he's got disadvantage because you're trying to dirge. That misses. It's you're on this rock and it's trying to just peck at you at its beak. And then try smacking you off the rock with its claws, and they both miss. Okay, this guy's turn. He's he wants to go over and protect its mate, but uh, it's too focused on this bug bugbear lady who's enraged, smacking it across the face with a stick. <laughs> so it attacks. Oh, that hits. Uh, only does four damage to her though. Ha <laughs> ha! This is the true power of rage. Mm. And then it's gonna slash against her face with its claws. That hits. Ooh. That uh, is also four damage. No, it's just she's just getting like beaten down on, and she's just like not even flinching. She gets like a couple scrapes on her, and she's fine. She's still in rage mode. He has one more turn left of a rage. Alright, Deus is staring. Uh, what's her movement? For? Oh. oh yeah, she can get up there. Uh, she's actually going to come up and help you guys. She has a rapier. She pulls out a rapier and just stabs it in the side because it's focused on you. Uh, Rapier. That misses. Okay. Oh. Error. Yeah, I know. But uh, it would have been a 12. Yeah. yeah, it wouldn't have mattered, even if she did. Anyway, well, that's her turn. Your turn. You going to continue trying to dodge? No. 
Okay, you have an advantage because you're flanking now with light. Yeah, you hit. Yeah, you damage. Oh, it felt that one. It smacked it. You smack it like right across its beak as it's trying to like look down on you. You just swing upwards, smack its crab, smack it across its beak, and uh, its beak's like cracked up and ugly. Yeah, its beak is all like starting to crack up. It's got blood coming out of its mouth. Ugh, it just looks like a tired, beat up animal. Well, he's like, I almost feel sorry. And then it stabbed, then he stabbed it in the butt. With that, 27. Oh, yeah. So that is 11. Oh. Uh, so that'd be to do. Uh, I just gotta check something real quick. How much HP does it have in total? Oh. Uh, so he stabs his spear so far up its butt that uh, his spear is. Besides, like, the end of the handle, or the end of the spear where you can kind of pull it out, it's just a little nub. He's basically impaled it through its butt all the way up through its body. And then it fall as it's falling over onto the rock where you are, uh, its own weight, basically, as Blight's pulling out his spear. Uh. It's falling over onto the rock towards you. It's falling forward. Uh, its own weight makes the spear, as Blight's still holding it, uh, pull out of its butt. It's covered in blood, guts, and poop. <laughs> Blight's, like, just holding it like a dirty napkin with its fingertips. With its fingertips. He's like, oh, no, my, I gotta clean this now. And it's like, well, there's water here. We just use that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that one is out of commission. There you go. Uh, the other owl bear roars out in anger, watching its mate just fall down and hit the ground. Uh, Blades, I, I kind of feel bad now. Uh... He also can move right over to here and do his unarmed strike. He just flies over and just does like uh he like he flies forward, then he stops and like rears his leg back and then stomps into the the uh, other owl bear. Uh seventeen, that hits. This one still has quite a bit of HP. Uh let's see, seven plus that is 39. Okay. That's Blight's turn. No, she's on her last turn of rage. And she sees Blight showing up behind, uh, next to her. And she's like, yes. She misses. And then she tries smacking across the face. That hits. Oh, God. Basically, slow motion, the end of the, sta uh, end of the halberd, the, the pole strike. Uh, smacks it across the face in slow motion and like cracks of its beak start to splinter off. Right? And his beak is all fucked up now. <laughs> Let's see, that is 10 damage. Right. And that's Nala's turn. She's still in rage until the start of her next. Right. Miss Straw, she's going to. Boop down here, one spot. She like slowly scuffles to the to to her left, and uh, aims her bow and pew. Oh, she hits. Oh, goddamn. Max damage too. All right, so that is basically where its beak was like um, all beat up. All of a sudden, just the arrow just goes whoosh, right into its face. It's got an arrow in its face, but not piercing its brain. It's like in where the beak is. Uh, so it's, it's it's like trying to move its face or move its mouth, and there's like an arrow flicking around. <laughs> uh, it's angry now. It's gonna attack now. It, it wants to go and attack uh, Miss Straw after that arrow, but its face is all fucked up because 
uh, nah. She's gonna try to attack with its beak. I'm gonna say it has disadvantage because it's so cracked up. Also, fuck it. I'm... Its face is beat up. <laughs> and then it attacks with its claws, though, and that fucking hits. Holy Jesus! Ah, uh, so that cut in half. Now it finally takes a hard hit. Uh, point two. Yeah, I know. I was just minusing it off of her current. But she finally took a hard hit. Uh, Daisy's like, oh shit. Uh, she's gonna. Oh, she can go to there. She's gonna go up and slap Nah as hard as she can right on the butt with cure wounds. Yay, 7 HP. And that's all she's got for now. Uh, she's got to minus the spell slot. <laughs> Go get her, tiger. It's like, I'm a bear. <laughs> but yeah, she's just like basically just snake person running up with her little snake body. And then like... Um, uh, atomic slamming her hands into her butt from the side instead of from like down from up high. Yeah, your turn. Mm -hmm. You got a crit fail. <laughs> Get a 19. Yeah, that hits. Oh, yeah. Oh. And, and, yeah, you do max damage. <laughs> this angry midget comes running up and smashes it across the face of the spiky club weapon. Oh, God. <laughs> so let's see, that's 15 uh, plus... Do -do -do. So yeah, it took a hard hit to the face. That wasn't even a critical, but it did so much that it's like kind of like in shock that it just got hit that hard by something so painful. <laughs> like... Like, you know, like one of his eyes start to fall out from being bashed over the face by a giant spiky club. Anyway, Blight's turn. Uh, he's just gonna like slightly move over to about here and flank him. Dead's uh, spear's dirty. He doesn't want to touch it, so he's just like he kind of just left it there. Uh, he's gonna try that attack that he learned. His uh, uber attack. So basically, he's charging up wind in his fist, and it's like basically a compressed air vacuum around his fist. And then he punches his fist into uh, the bugbear's butt. Yep. Oh, and yeah. So it's got to do a strength check or strength saving throw. Uh, oh, strength's its best one. Ah, oh, it, it succeeds. So it takes half damage still. Uh, yeah, it takes half damage on, uh, it, if it succeeds the throw, it takes half instead of the full amount. Uh, so yeah, six damage. Uh, but there's like a big blast of wind. It hits it in the butt, but it just kind of just, it, yeah, his butt it, furry ass is just jiggling. And it kind of like went inwards a bit and then popped back out. He's <laughs> like, huh. He's looking at his hands like, oh, I thought that would work. Oh, well. 
And Nas no longer in rage, but she is just going to attack with all of her might. Actually, she's going to do something stupid, which could put her at risk. She's going to use Reckless Attack. Uh, reckless Attack. Starting at level D, you can throw aside all concern for defense to attack with Fierce Desperation. When you make your first attack on your turn, you can decide to attack recklessly. Doing so gives you advantage on melee weapon attack rolls using strength during this turn, but attack rolls against you have advantage on... So, she attacks with advantage, and the enemy who attacks her back also has advantage. So, she's going to use her halberd, and it's only for the first attack. So, halberd with advantage. That hits, thank god. Yeah, so that is... Ooh, damn, that kills it. She just, like, she's not enraged, but she just blindly swings her halberd like a retard. And slashes it across the uh, throat, causing it to bleed out, and plop on the ground. We just killed two bugbears, or uh, owl bears. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yes, two fifty.